Hello and welcome to Everything iPad, the show all about the iPad. Whether you're a professional user, a complete beginner, or like me somewhere in the middle, this show is about helping you make the most out of your device. And I'm looking to build up a community of people who want to make the most out of their iPad and incorporate it more and more into their workflows. And in some cases, maybe even make it your main computing device. My name's Matt, and on today's show, we're going to be talking about Today View and how it can be an extension of your brain. Today View is something that was introduced long ago by Apple, and ever since Apple introduced the ability to have widgets and put them anywhere on your home screen, Today View is, I feel like, is something that's been forgotten about quite a lot. And it's still there, and long may it stay there, because it's something that I find really useful. I'm going to be talking about how I use Today View to keep all of my widgets in one place, really organized. The top widgets that I use to help me stay organized and focused every day, and uh, it helps keep me sane. And I'll be honest, I think Today View has had this, well, it's got some magical powers. I mean, that's probably an exaggeration, but it, it's something that I use all the time on my iPad and my iPhone. And I'm someone, I mean, when you look at my home screen, in fact, let's look at my home screen now you'll see that I'm not a minimalist, but this is the only home screen I have. I don't like to swipe through lots of different pages. And I've tried the process of having several home, several home screens and having different types of widgets on each one and trying to be organized that way. But I just don't like the massive swiping you have to do to try and find the thing you want. And I like to use today view and if you don't know what today view is it's when you swipe from left to right on your ipad or iphone and you get this view and all of my widgets appear on the left hand side of my screen these are all the ones that i use and in today's show i'm going to talk to you about each widget why i find it useful and hopefully you get some really good recommendations in um, for some widgets and maybe even encourage you to make better use of today view if you don't already so please like comment subscribe and uh let's get started talking about each one of my widgets so first up when we look at the today view the thing i have at the top is fantastical it's my main calendar app i've been using this for years instead of the stock app i like several things about fantastical over the stock app i think first of all i like the way it presents a list of events for you that's easily scrollable. I like the ease of use and just generally the layout a bit better, particularly on the iPhone, actually. I think it looks a lot better there. But one thing I really like is Fantastic House really good widgets. It's got loads of different ones. And the one I use shows me today's date at the top, nice and big. And it also also shows me an overview of the month ahead so I can see what day um, of the week a particular date falls on. And more importantly, it tells me when the last working day of the month is, because for me, my day job, that's payday. So it's a little bit of a countdown for that. Underneath, it gives me a breakdown of events that I have coming up. So that's really useful to see what's coming up in the next day or so. Now, I've turned my calendars off because I've got loads of private stuff on there. Um, so I've just turned on the UK National Holiday. So you can kind of see what it looks like. But this is usually filled up with a lot more stuff. I've got a couple of events coming up later today. And it's really good overview of what's coming up in the short term, which is why I really like using the fantastic how widget and the app. Next up, we have Carrot Weather. This is another app that I've been using for a really, really long time. And if you don't know Carrot Weather, it's, it's sort of infamous for delivering weather with a bit of humor. Um, there's different settings and layers, and you can just deliver weather in a very formal way or I can deliver it full of insults and profanity if you prefer and I really like this app I think it looks great and it's one I've been using a long time but the killer feature for me again is the range of widgets you get the developer of carrot weather is really active always updating the app keeping things in top condition and you do have to pay a subscription for it it costs I've got a legacy account and it costs me a few pounds a year the, the price of Carrot Weather is quite reasonable. And I think what you get in terms of the widgets is great. And also, if you have an Apple Watch, the complications you get, you get tons as well on that. So it's a really fully featured app. So the Carrot Weather widget that I have here 
It gives me a summary of the weather in the next few hours, which I think is really useful. And then it gives me a breakdown of the next five days, what the weather's going to look like then. It's just all in one place. They even have to open the app to see what's going on. It's a really, really useful widget to have. The next widget I'm going to show you is one that I've installed fairly recently. This one's called Countdown. Now, I used to have a very similar app on my phone called Up Ahead, which is great. It looks really good, but it doesn't support, doesn't have a native iPad app. And Countdown does. It supports iPhone and iPad. Essentially, what this, this app does is you put in a bunch of dates and it will give you a countdown in terms of days. And even I think it does like hours and minutes and stuff like that if you want it to. And it will give you a countdown until that event occurs. And these events can be uh, reoccurring, can be, you know, monthly or annual events like birthdays and so on. And it could also be one off uh, events as well. So I use it. I mean, I'm going to be really honest. Birthdays, it's killer for that. I've got birthdays I need to remember. It, it lets me know in advance when they're coming up. How many days to go? Plenty of time to buy a card and a gift if I like that person. And it's really it's, it's been a godsend. It's been really good for things like birthdays and anniversaries and things. But I also use it for um, releases. So I have a couple of Apple TV shows I'm really looking forward to. Foundation and Invasion that are coming up. I've also got countdowns to game releases. And um, I've got Starfield, which is coming out in September. Really looking forward to that game. So that's going to come up on the widget soon when it's the next few events have kicked by. And also um, some upcoming films are going to see. So June part two, I've set up a countdown for that. And there's two really good um, things I like about countdown. And that is it helps me remember important events. But it's also just nice to have a countdown to stuff you're looking forward to. You know, you you get life's pretty busy. You forget things and you want something to look forward to at the end of the day. You know, life's pretty hard. <laughs> and just having, you know, a TV show that's coming up, you've got the countdown there or a good film or a computer game you're looking forward to or whatever, whatever you want, a concert, anything like that. I think it's really nice to have a countdown show you, you know, something you're looking forward to. So that's Countdown. It's a really good app. I think you have to pay a subscription. It's not much. Um, it works on family sharing. I checked that today. So if you have a shared account with family members, that's really good. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a reasonable price, I think. Then we have an app that I only installed last week, but something I found really useful. This app is called Dark Noise, and it basically plays ambient sounds. So if you like white noise or rain or the sound of a fan or something, you know, the waves, just a continuous sound. And it, it, it's really useful. Now, we're in hotter weather at the moment and I've got an air conditioning unit right behind me. That air con unit is loud. So when I'm trying to work, they, you know, it's a bit difficult to concentrate. So I've got noise cancelling headphones. Now, the problem is when I put my noise cancelling headphones on, I have tinnitus um, I get sort of high pitched noises on occasions, but even more disgustingly, I can hear my own pulse in my neck. So you become conscious of that. So you need something to drown out the, the, the air con or the background noise, but also the sound from inside your own head. I sound crazy. Um, so I use dark noise, I use gentle rain or ambient sounds in the background. And it, I find it really helpful with focus, really, when I'm trying to do some writing or trying to get things done. So. The app is as a subscription, but it was, you can use it for free. And actually, I don't have a subscription yet. And the, the range of free sounds you get is decent. All the apps you can, all the sounds, sorry, you can see on this widget, they're the free ones. They're good. They're good enough. So you don't need the massive range of sounds. Get Dark Noise. Use it for free. Use the widget. And that's enough. Um, dark Noise has a monthly subscription or annual, or you can buy like a lifetime um, license. I think it was £50 the last time I looked. And, you know, it's fairly reasonable for what you get. And that's if you want loads of sounds. If you're just happy to free ones, go get it. It's really useful. Next, we have an app that I've also had for a very long time. I had it many, many years ago. Maybe even like 10 years ago I had first got this. And I stopped using it for several years, but I brought it back again. This app is called Streaks. I have no idea what it costs because I got it so long ago. It might even be free. Don't know. Someone help me out in the comments below. But 
this is it lets you set up a series of things that you need to do and it that could be something you do daily weekly monthly or even several times a day and when you've done that thing you just hold down on the icon it marks it off as done and you build up a streak so it could be things like taking medication i've got a few bits here going for a walk every day putting out the bins every week um and it could be that you want to encourage you to participate in your hobbies more like taking photos playing an instrument um i use it for journaling it reminds me to journal um i have a sort of mood journal and a daily journal where i type a lot of text and i'll talk about that in a minute and it, it's nice because it just it just gives me a reminder that i need to do that every day or however often i need to do it and it supports um lock screen widgets on the iphone and the reason i know this is an ipad show but lock screen widgets come into the ipad so from i reckon from day one when ipad os uh, 17 comes out you're going to have the streaks lock screen lock screen widget and that's the one i see the most and it just reminds me that you know i haven't done this today or haven't done that today and it just makes sure i get the things that i need to get done and make sure that happens so streaks really really useful one of my most used widgets i think on here next up we have my journaling app which is day one day one again just like streaks i got a very very long time ago i have a legacy account back in the days where you just paid a one-off fee for the app it's a subscription model now but you can use aspects of it for free and it's a, just a nice journaling app journaling app you can type lots of things add pictures location data step counts activities it's a bit like apple's upcom upcoming journaling app which i'm not sure is coming to the ipad i haven't found that bit out yet i don't think it is i think it's just an iphone thing for now so i'm definitely going to be sticking with day one and this widget just tells me what my streak is again it's sort of a reminder for me um so i've I've done my journaling every day apart from today, so I need to make sure I do that a bit later on. Again, really, really useful. Now, the next four widgets I have are all from the Reminders app. And if you watch the last episode of the show, I went into sort of in depth about how I use Reminders to stay organized. And this probably doesn't make sense if you haven't seen that episode, so maybe go back and watch it. But I talked about how I break down my to-do list into useful, interesting, and fun. And these things help me keep balance over the course of the week. So I have widgets for all three of these. I also have my shopping list here as well. Um, one thing I'm really looking forward to with iPad OS 17 is the interactive widgets. So from here, I will just be able to tick off things as I've done them. So that's going to be really useful. Next up, we have Notion. Notion is an app that I use for scripting videos, jotting down ideas, uh, I'm starting to put stuff together. And quite a lot of the time I'm using it for this channel. The widget is really simple. It uses, it just lists my most recent documents. I can tap on one, it'll open it up. Really useful just to see what I've got going on recently. Notion is the app I use. I don't use notes so much anymore. Notion's very handy. With the the custom categories and the the sort of the sections you have within it there's lots of great power users i will admit i've not gone in deep with notion lots of power users have done all sorts of fantastic things with it i just use it for scripting at the moment and this widget just tells me what i'm working on next we have a widget that looks a bit like twitter but it's not this is um, a mastodon app called ivory so I do use Mastodon a lot more than Twitter nowadays since the takeover. And um, Ivory is by the same people who made Tweetbot, which was, I think, the best Twitter app that existed at the time. So they've got a great Mastodon app, which looks very much like Tweetbot. This one, this uh, widget just tells me what a bunch of recent toots. <laughs> I'm not going to never say that again. Um, what they are, the recent ones, I follow a lot of tech stuff, so it just gives me an overview, Lot usually just like tech news and stuff like that. So I follow a bunch of accounts, and it just gives me a nice summary like that. Then we have Apple News. Apple News is not something I use that often, but the widgets are quite good because you can customize the widgets to only show you news from a particular topic. So I have a widget just set to Apple News to give me stuff about Mac, iPhone, iPad or whatever. 
and um, I just find it useful to get a glimpse of the headlines. And if I see something on occasions I'm interested in, I will just tap on it, be able to read the article. It's just nice to have that summary there. Um, and yeah, I think the Apple News widgets are really good. Apple News itself isn't amazing, but the widgets are decent. It's one of the one of the best ones out there. Then after that, I have uh, a widget for my email app. I don't use the stock email app. I use one called Edison, Edison Mail, and it's a free app and it's available for iPad, iPhone and the Mac. And it has one killer feature that every email app should have. And what it is, is, you know, when you get a new email, and it, sh it shows you a blue dot next to the title of the email to show that it's unread in Edison email you can just flick away the dot to mark it as read and I can just get rid of a bunch of emails just very very quickly instead of like what a lot of emails do you have to swipe across on the email and tap red or just swipe all the way across lots of swipes to do with this you just just flick the dots off all your emails are marked as red it's really really useful the apps the widgets you get with it are fine this one just shows me if I've got any new emails that have come through. Really useful. Um, just gives me a glimpse there. Then I have the Apple TV app. I don't watch too much um, content on the iPad, but I do on occasions. And it just shows me what my most recently watched shows are. So I'm currently re-watching for like the 20th time um, a British political comedy called The Thick of It. If you haven't seen it, it is amazing. It's very sweary. But it's one of my favorite shows, and I usually rewatch it um, once a year. I find it quite cathartic, I'll be honest. Um, it's a great show. I've also started watching Mr. In Between on Disney Plus. Um, I've only watched an episode, so I really need to get through that. Um, good show so far. And yeah, that app, this app just gives me a quick overview of what I'm watching. And then finally, I have a Kindle app. The Kindle app widget just tells me what my most recently red book or what i'm currently reading is and i've just finished essentialism um which i talked about in the last episode of the show i don't really read that much on the ipads i find it much more comfortable on that on an actual kindle which i've got in the bedroom and uh yeah it just shows me what i'm currently reading if i need to have a look inside uh, and get into that book really quickly so that's it that is a summary of how i use today view on the iPad. It's, I think, a criminally under underrated feature. I really hope they don't get rid of it. I just really like having all of my widgets in one place. I can just quickly swipe between them with one hand to see what it is instead of looking at multiple pages. I just think it's great. And yeah, maybe it's a feature that I'll expand. Maybe if today you went across the whole screen, I don't know. Just a thought. I hope they don't get. Of, I hope they don't get rid of it, and I hope they add features to it and make it more exciting. But I like up down scrolling instead of side to side. Right, that's it. That's the end of this show. Do get involved. Um, like, comment, subscribe. The social stuff I've had. I do Twitter, Mastodon. There's a shop, Buskill Shop. If you like the show, want to leave a tip? Go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash Buzzkill. And uh, do get involved. I'm looking to build up a community, as I say, of people who just want to make better use of the iPad. Thanks very much for watching. And I'll be back soon with another episode of Everything iPad. Goodbye.